he's got a radio control in this thing. Yeah, for the parachute. The ranges are open. Uh, you forgot D3. Oh, sorry. We're going with mine. Do you want to set up the camera? Oh, in circles on me.
live. <laughs> I forgot to click the button. <laughs> My name is Tim Van Milligan, and you're at Roxim Live. This is where we talk about the Roxim software. Um, today is October 28, 2022. Uh, we are live. Um, this is recorded, so you might be watching later, but uh, welcome to the show. Um, I have a monitor here that I'm monitoring the chat, and people are already at it, which is fine with me. Um, we're talking about daylight savings time. When does that end in the United States? And we will end, I think, on November 6th. Um, We've got Johan from the Netherlands here. We have Low Budget Bob from Arizona. We have Chris Swainston here. Um, ah, I don't, no question so far, but um, if you have a question about how to use Roxim, Roxim Pro, or the Launch Visualizer, um, I can take those questions and try to answer them the best that I can. Um, let's get started. So let me show you my desktop here. Let me click on the right button. Um, this is the Apogee website. Um, if you're new to Roxim, um, we have a scrolling ba banner bar here, and one of them will always be Roxim. There's the Roxim. So if you click on that, that will take you where you can find out information about it. Um, we released Roxim 10 in April of 2020, but since then, uh, a couple weeks ago, released 10.5, which is what we're on right now. This is um, where you can get a free trial. You can order it if you want to order it. Um, if you have an older version, version 8 and um, below, there's a small upgrade fee, but 9 to a 10. And then 10 to 10.5, it's all free. Um, so go ahead and do that. Um, here is the process for doing that. Um, if you go to the how-to and guides in our website, click on that and then come down to software. There's more stuff, you know, again, the free trial where you can purchase it, uh, what it does, some of the features, frequently asked questions, um, the system requirements, which is a good one. I just heard that uh, Apple released Ventura, which is their latest operating system. Uh, we already had somebody that's asking us, does it does Roxim 10.5 work on Ventura? And the answer should be yes. We had he he downloaded it and he got it to work, so I assume it works. I'm still running Catalina, so I'm like four operating systems down the line, and I'm going to have to upgrade soon because I got a. Another piece of software that I use says, hey, it's time to upgrade because if you don't, our software is not going to work. <sighs> yeah, so I'll be upgrading. Uh, there's also a version history right here about all the things that we've changed. Again, if you have Roxim 9 or Roxim 10, you can upgrade to the latest version, which is 10.5, for free. And we highly recommend that because we fixed so many bugs we added a whole bunch of new features and you're going to want to use so go ahead and do that um, there is no penalty to do that um, there's you should have no fear of messing up because we will take care of you if you're wanting to upgrade from those older versions um, there's also video tutorials here. The Roxim Live Training is what we're doing now. So if you click on that, that will take you to our archive of the Roxim Live Trainings. Um, last week was episode 92. This week is episode 93. These are the topics that we talk about, um, that we talked about. Uh, we talked about the gliding parachute, which you can't see, but it was on the wall behind me. Um, we released that on Tuesday of this week, um, so that is now out. So if you are interested in not having to walk to retrieve your rockets and, and rather have the rocket come back down to you, 
um, you might be interested in the gliding parachute. Um, it's selling like gangbusters. And our, whenever we start a new product, new product, we start with a limited run to see how well it's going to sell. So that kind of tells us how many we're going to need to stock up on in the future because we have to buy all these expensive parts. So our first run is always a small run of, of product. Um, so if you're interested in it, I think you might want to do it now before the Christmas rush comes because this could be a hot selling Christmas item. So you might want to get it sooner rather than waiting. Um, we will get, have a more in the future, but the parachutes are really complex. They're not like an ordinary parachute. There's a lot of precision that has to be built into them. And our supplier can't make them as fast as they can make round parachutes. So they take longer to get here. So when we order now to make our next run, it's going to be a little longer lead time. So you might want to take that into account. Now is a good time while we still have them in stock. Um, we also talked about um, doing a rocket that splits into two and finding the descent time for the payload. That's kind of like a TARC rocket. Um, we, we talked about finding recommended motors. This is one of the features that 10, version 10 has is it's a click of a button and it gives you 100 different motors for your rocket design. All of them that should work fine. Um, so that's, in, that's an, a reason why you want to upgrade uh, and we also talked about adding materials to the rocket database. Um, if you're interested in other topics, you know, like, um, I don't know, um, subcomponents, um, you can do a find on this page. So on your keyboard, do a control F or command F on a Mac, and it will bring up a um, search bar here at the top of the screen. And then you can start typing in words and, you know, type in subassembly and it didn't find it. Uh, let's try to get rid of the Y. <laughs> Subassembled, subassemblies, plural. Uh, we talked about that. In fact, we probably talked about it twice because I'm showing two matches up here. Yeah, how do pods differ from subassemblies? Okay, so that's our archive, so you might want to be interested in that. Uh, but what we're here for today is to answer your questions, so let me go to the chat board and see what we got going on. Uh, we have Rosa from Ottawa, Low Budget Bob, MOB Rockets from Mesa, Arizona. Um, and he has the first question is, how will the new RC chute be incorporated into Roxim? Okay, that's a good question. <laughs> um, well, one, um, Roxim always assumes that the parachute um, comes down at a, at a predetermined rate, depending on the size and the shape of the parachute. Um, and then it always drifts with the wind. Where the gliding parachute, it doesn't drift with the wind. You can actually penetrate into the wind. So how does Roxanne take in that in one count? Unfortunately, it can't. Um, because it, um, it's, yeah, that's kind of a good question. Um, one, there's a lot of mystery around the gliding parachutes that we don't fully know yet. For example, um, the gliding parachute, let me show you a picture of it on the wall in case you, well, I'll, I'll do it on our, our website. Um, so if I go to the home page, um, and if I scroll down here, this is kind of what it looks like. Let me go to the page that it's on. Okay, so here is kind of what it looks like. Um, so that's the parachute. And what you do is you attach, like from this point, 
upwards is rocket agnostic. It doesn't matter what rocket is hanging below. So you can attach it to any rocket that you want as long as it will fit into the rocket. And um, this little tube up here, let me give you a better picture of it. That little tube where the controller and the electronics is, that's BT70. So that's 2.2 inches in diameter. So your rocket has to be at least big enough for that to slide into. So um, a BT80 works just fine that it will fly in, fly, slide into. Um, a good rocket is probably like the Amarok that we sell. It's a BT80 with a 29 millimeter motor mount. Um, but even a 24 millimeter motor mount works great too. Um, I was using for test flying, I think um, this rocket right here, um, it was scratch built, but it's about the same size as the Apogee Grappler rocket. So it's two 18 inch long BT-80 tubes. So it's 36 inches long. And that had a 24 millimeter motor mount in it. And I was using Estes E, uh, what are they, E-16s? No, that has a 29 millimeter motor mount. But an E-motor will, will put this up like about 600 feet because it's light enough um, and that's a, that's a great rocket to start with I mean, if you're just playing around with it. But like I said, what we don't know is the descent rate is going to depend on the orientation of the parachute to the wind. So let me, let me give you a wide angle screen here. So if the, glide, the parachute is going this way and the wind is coming from this way, you're going to get a little bit of lift coming off of that parachute. So that, if you're going up, now your descent rate has changed, right? Because you're actually going in a negative descent rate. Um, but if you're going with the wind, now you're going to lose a little bit. You're going to fall a little bit faster. So the descent rate of the rocket coming down is going to vary depending on the orientation of the rocket with respect to the wind. In calm air, it should be at a more stable descent rate, um, but then it depends on the weight of the rocket. Um, and we don't really have a good descent rate because we haven't been able to test it fully. Um, we're, this is one of the reasons we call it experimental, is we don't know what the real descent rate is. So wait, what you're going to have to do, and I wish um, Jolly Logic Altimeter 3s were available, because they were awesome, because they had a way of uh, record. it was a recording altimeter, but it was like really tiny. So you could, there's enough room inside that little controller where you could just drop in an altimeter and record the altitude of the rocket coming down with respect to the time. Um, and that would give you a nice graph of descent rate during the entire descent, whether you're going into the wind or with the wind. Um, so, so if you were in Roxim, what you would probably do is you would take that data, so you measure the descent rate, and you probably get an average descent rate. Um, and then the other thing is, how much can it penetrate into the wind? And it's going to depend on how fast the wind is blowing. You know, if you got a 10 mile an hour wind going this way, and your rocket can only go five mile an hour that way, that means it's still going to be going five miles an hour backwards. So there's a lot of variables here. Um, so. My guess is in Roxim, what you would probably do, let me just open up a design here and show you what how I would might do it. Um, Roxim designs. Um, 
Let me see. I'll just grab this one. It doesn't matter. Okay, so this I'm sure has a parachute in it. So let's look at it from the side view. Okay, so here it says P for parachute, and it's a really thin line, so I'm, I'm assuming that that parachute is like really tiny. Uh, let me go to the design components and find it. So here's the parachute. Let's see, open it and see what size it is. A 24 inch diameter, it didn't have any, it had zero thickness. That's why it was so thin. So, so as soon as I give it a little bit of thickness, you see it, it, it grows a bit. Um, so this is, um, let me uh, change this to seven sides, go back to eight sides. Um, it's showing a descent rate. Wow, that's like a really slow descent rate. Uh, oh, calculated mass is, because mass override is on. Um, well, anyway, we could, you can find out by doing a simulation. So let's throw a rocket motor in there. So this, <laughs> this rocket is going to go high. It's got 29 millimeter motors. But let's choose something small. Um, let's just look at Cesaroni. Let's look at Estes. Estes E16. This is the motor that I like for testing. Um, but unfortunately, we're out of stock. I used them all up. <laughs> let's give it a, I don't know, seven second delay. And uh, click OK. So now we loaded a motor into this rocket, as you can see back here. Um, flight events, parachute, deploy at maximum ejection delay, starting state. Um, let's make it a six foot long launch rod. Um, we got a six mile an hour wind. Okay, so let's let's see the flight profile. So we got on your screen, you're going to see the wind coming from the left side going to the right. And the, the parachute, when it comes down, it's just going to drift with the wind. So let me launch this rocket. So the rocket takes off. It goes, whoa, this rocket went unstable. But the uh, parachute did come out. And it, it came down. Why did it go unstable? And it comes down and it lands right there. Let's stop it right there. All right, so we can get a descent rate. I go to my preferences over here. Oops, not preferences. I want details. The details button right here. It'll bring out um, the actual numbers. And I'm looking for um, velocity, the x velocity. And at zero time, we have no velocity. And I'm looking for, like, OK, when the parachute's out, we have an x velocity of six miles an hour. So that means it's going with the wind. Um, and my y velocity, I'm coming down at um, 4.2 miles per hour. So that's right here. OK, so that's my vertical velocity. So say your, your, your gliding parachute is coming down at 4 miles an hour, but it has a penetration of five miles an hour into the wind and right now we've got six miles an hour wind so what we would have to do is subtract the two and so that gives us a one mile an hour drift rate so i would go back into my simulation rerun a new simulation and this time under my launch conditions change my wind speed to one mile per hour and then do a flight profile. It still went unstable. <laughs> I have no idea why. Oh, look at this. My center of gravity is way back here. Here's the center pressure. That's why it went unstable. But why? Oh, I'll check on that in just a second. So here is the rocket again. And now it's taking off, and now it's coming down at one mile an hour. So this is the gliding parachute. It's trying to fight a six mile an hour wind, but it's, it, in, in the simulation, you'd run it at one mile an hour because you can penetrate into the wind. So it's still going to drift a little bit, 
but I think the previous simulation it landed like 160 feet away where this one only lands 55 feet away so it's it's a lot less of a walk to get the rocket okay so hopefully that's kind of our thinking on how to put the gliding parachute into Roxham. You're going to have to do some testing because I don't have all the answers on the, on the performance characteristics of the gliding parachute. And there's three sizes. There's a 24 inch, a 28 inch, and a 32 inch. Now those sizes are measured differently than a regular parachute. Um, if I go here on the Apogee page, um, it shows you what, when I say 24 inches, it's measuring the keel length from the base of the parachute up to this point out in space where the wing tips would meet. Um, so that's a 24 inch. Now these parachutes are a lot more efficient than a regular round parachute because you're getting lift off of them. Um, and because of that, you're gonna use a smaller parachute. And we've been selling a lot of these parachutes so far, and I've got the feeling that most people are buying a big parachute. You know, thinking, okay, I've got, um, I got a, my regular rocket uses a 36 inch parachute. So I'm thinking that a gliding parachute, I'd use the closest size to it, 32 inches. It doesn't work like that. These things are so efficient, they come down so slow that you're probably going to want to use the 24 inch, the smallest one, and even that might be coming down too slow. And if they come down too slow, they, they're going to drift more because you don't have a forward penetrating velocity. Um, so you actually want a heavier rocket with a smaller chute. Um, so I, I don't know how to tell people this, but you know, get the smaller. Sh I'd start with the small chute. Um, it's start with that and then work up if it's coming down too fast, um, rather than starting with a big parachute. Because I started. Let me tell you my experience. <laughs> I used the middle size. I used a 28 inch parachute on a rocket that weighed over 600 grams. And I about thermaled it away. I, it was so high. It, it, when it deployed, like I said, it was only about 600 feet up. But then we pointed it into the wind and then it started going up like it was in an elevator. <laughs> And then it got so high, we couldn't see it anymore. And I said, I better start running to chase after this thing. So I gave the radio transmitter, the remote control to somebody else. And I said, just see if you can keep it pointed in the wind. And then I took off and about a mile later, um, I, was, I was in a forest and I got lucky. I actually found it, um, but it, it it was went up. Uh, my rocket was too light for the big parachute. Um, you know, so I'm using that one on a bigger rocket, heavier rocket. Okay, so hopefully that answered the question on gliding parachutes. Um, but now why is this rocket unstable? So we got our center pressure here and the center of gravity here. So that is behind. So that is an unstable rocket. Um, so we got a user specified mass here. So that's my first clue. So I want to go to the mass override, which is up here, because I'm seeing this right here. That tells me that it's user specified. So somebody did a mass override who created this file. Um, and it says use the values below for all the simulations. So I'm using a mass of zero and then the center of gravity locate. Whenever you do a mass, you also have to put in a center of gravity and they put in nothing. So when they started out, the uh, center of gravity was here at the tip, but the thing weighed nothing. So it was like lighter than a feather 
and then they put a rocket motor in it and when soon as you put that rocket motor in it center of gravity goes way back here because that's the only thing that has mass and now it's behind the, the center of pressure so let me uncheck this and when you see that what happened was the center of gravity that our center of the pressure that was here or the, the center of gravity that was here jumped to right here so now we're stable again so now I can rerun that simulation and we can see what it looks like so this thing should go a lot higher and it did it went 292 feet um, but I'm just seeing down here that where's this thing gonna land we still have a one mile an hour wind let's see the rocket takes off oh parachute deployed going up what do we have a zero second delay oh sure did zero second delay so it didn't have any coast in it and that's why it's not really drifting very far so always look at your uh, 2d flight profile or in in the uh, Roxim Pro the 3d visualizer the launch visualizer because that's going to show you a lot uh, you know you look at this number yeah it went higher but it should have gone a lot higher um, and the reason is because the parachute ejected while it was still going up really fast. All right, so that was good. So if I, if I wanted to do it right, I would choose a longer delay. So let's you know, like choose an eight second delay. And now look at it. All right, so now we're at 1,025 feet. I don't know if you saw that. It just popped up really quick. 1,025 feet is my maximum altitude. And wow. It's um, still not going to drift very far because I'm, I'm seeing the numbers here. And what I'm thinking is that the rocket's going to weathercock into the wind and then drift back down. So let's see what that looks like. That's just looking at these numbers down here. So we're at 700, 800 feet and it's still going up. We're going to go to a 1025, and we did, and now the rocket's coming down, um, and it is drifting at one mile an hour, but it's going to come down really close to the pad, 36 feet from the pad. So that was a really good flight, and that was with the gliding parachute. <laughs> All right, so let's go back to here. Checking, but if you got a question, there's still plenty of time to ask your Roxim question. Uh, low budget Bob, I had a rocket given to me and nobody knows what it is. How do I enter the info into Roxim in order to know what motors will work with this one? Well, that's a really good question. Um, Okay, I'm looking at the questions over here. Chris Swainston has, how do you make the rocket sprite files? I tried it, now every time I load the simulation, it stops loading the sprite files at 85%. Hmm. Um, I don't know why that stops loading at 85%. We'll kind of kill two birds with one stone. Um, low budget Bob says, I had a rocket given to me and nobody knows what it is. How do I enter the info into Roxim in order to know what motors will work with this one? Well, basically, what you're doing is starting from scratch. You're like a blank sheet of paper. So, uh, in fact, I had a question from somebody. He asked, he, was, he wanted to design a rocket with a blank sheet of paper. Um, let me see if I still have that open. Um, no. So somebody sent me a photo. He says, I want to design this rocket in Roxem. So it kind of has a bulbous nose. It looks like a Delta II. And then it has two strap-on boosters. So assuming that this was kind of like the design that you're trying to make, um, low budget Bob. <laughs> um, I don't know if this is a kit or not or something scratch built. I'm assuming this is scratch built. 
Um, so how will you design this in RockSim? So um, the first thing I would do is get out a caliper or a ruler because you're going to have to make measurements. There's unfortunately no way around that. If you don't know what the rocket is, you're going to have to make measurements. So I got a rocket here. And I would start, you always start with the nose cone. And the first thing I would do is get my calipers and measure that diameter. And then measure the length. Um, and then it's got a shoulder, so you'd measure the diameter and the length of the shoulder. Um, and then you have to start putting in the components one at a time. So let's do something like this. Um, so I'm going to create a new design, go up here to the new button, and it's going to erase all that. Um, and I'll say, yeah, uh, let's save the changes. Okay, so we're going to start with the nose cone, so designing a rocket from scratch. So we're going to, we're going to work across these tabs here on the top. So the first one is the rocket design attributes. And you're going to give it a name. We'll call it a um, strap-on cluster. And we're going to use the rocket stability equations. That's, that's by default, so I'll just leave it like that. Single stage rocket. Um, we're going to do the static margin at the base of the diameter, uh, the nose cone diameter, uh, which is fine. We're going to leave all this other stuff alone. Okay, so now we're done with this tab and we'll go to the next tab. And this is where we're going to start adding components. So the first part, we have to add a nose cone. So we're going to add a nose cone and so what I would do. Let's, let's guess at them things. So assuming we're working on that one with the big bulbous nose cone, um, and we measured it, let's say it measured at two inches. So um, I would probably first start with the shape and say that's eh, probably elliptical. Um, we know the diameter is two inches, and let's call the length um, three inches. So there's a nose cone shape. We need to give it a material. Um, let's call it polystyrene. Uh, we're gonna make it hollow. And again, you're, you're you're measuring with the calipers. You can get calipers real cheap down at like Harbor Freight or Home Depot. Any any hardware store will have them where you can just make accurate measurements. And that's what you want to do is try to be as accurate as possible. So we're gonna try to measure that wall thickness and. Let's, let's guess at it, like 0.05 inches thick. Um, and so now we have a weight of about 12 grams that Roxim is calculating. Let's give it a color. White, 2D color. I know people don't like changing their colors, but I'd like to. <laughs> Makes a prettier rocket. Um, I'm kicking my Hopefully it didn't go off. All right, so that we got we got the first part of the nose cone, and now we need a tube. So let's put a body tube onto that nose cone, and we know the outside diameter was two inches. So whenever you creating from scratch, it's always looking in the database first. And so I'm going to cancel out of that, and I'm going to enter the um, measurements myself. So let's say it's two inches on the outside diameter, and the inside diameter is I don't know what we we'll call it like. 1.92 inches, and let's give it a length of two inches, or something like that. And the material, we'll make that paper. Again, let's change the color. We'll make this a little bit like off-white. And the 2D color, let's make it blue. Okay. All right, so now on his rocket, he has this a transition right here. So we need to make a transition. So um, we highlight the tube, and we're going to go transition. And again, I'm going to um, ignore all that. And we'll say the front diameter is 2 inches, because that what is what we know. Um, the rear diameter, I'm not sure. So let's, um, let's go to the shoulder. Because there's a neat, a neat thing we can do in Roxim here. If I click on the shoulder, where's that? Come on. Oh, click on the shoulder, 
and then it brings up um, a front shoulder and a rear shoulder. So my rear shoulder is the tube that this is going to fit into. So let's call it a BT60. So I'm going to go to the database and look for a BT60 size tube, um, which is an, an episode. How did we lose audio? Mm. <sighs> Got a microphone. <laughs> ah, lost audio. Okay, hopefully that's working now. It's showing that it's working. So if my, uh, and it's magically back. <laughs> I got this cord right here that it's giving me problems. I need to get a new microphone cord. All right, so uh, where were, if, if you wanted to 3D print this, um, what you would do is, like I said, like here's my shoulder, but I don't, I don't have a, or my transition, but I don't have a shoulder here on this. Um, so I'm going to need to make one. So my diameter, the outside diameter is two inches, so my inside diameter has to be something smaller than that. So let's make it 1.98 inches, and give it a length of, I don't know, 0.75 inches. You can see now it added a shoulder in here, and now at this point. You know, if you look at it in 3D, um, you could print that on a 3D printer. And if you wanted to do that, you could go to Export Template, and you can export it as an SVG, which is the side view, or you can export it as an STL file. And then you can just magically 3D print it. And I'll throw it on my desktop and say Save. Um, and I'm going to give it a high res very high resolution <laughs> um, and then click OK and it exported it and it told me it exported it and so now if I go to my desktop and I'm showing a transition here and on the Mac it, Macintosh has a neat feature you can see it what the 3D is going to look like So there is my transition. It's and it's a solid transition, um, but I'm sure you can um, figure out how to print that on your own. Anyway, so that's how you would export out in 3D print. Um, if this export button is not showing up, um, go to your in Roxim, go to the Roxim preferences. On the Macintosh, it's under the Roxim menu. I think on Windows, it might be under the Help menu. Um, so you want to go down to, uh, I got to be, click OK. 
got to be on the main screen then I get the uh, preferences and then you go to miscellaneous and you have to make sure that this little checkbox is checked and it says allow temple template exports and then that button will show up on the bottom of the screen that allows you to export um, otherwise you've got to go to the Roxim menu the file menu and then export and then you'd have to export out a 3d model um, but if you export it out here you're going to export out the entire rocket uh, let me throw this on the desktop let's type in rocket and then select um, this time it would be like an OBJ OBJ and STL are very similar OBJ saves the color of the part um, so your 3D printer might be able to open up an OBJ file I don't know let me go back to the desktop and see what if seeing the transition oh I didn't like that one whatever that is <laughs> Okay, so it's, yeah, let's see, it's just like on, uh, it's just like an STL. Let's see, uh, rocket.obj is very similar to the STL. Anyway, that's just a little tidbit that I learned just last year that OBJs and STLs are almost identical except for the OBJ saves more data. Uh, okay, so now we got a, a nose cone. Now we need to add a body tube. So, so again, you're measuring your tube. And we said we measured this one as a BT60, which is 41.6 millimeters. And it added one, and it added a really long one. Um, let's actually, we'll just leave that. Um, but I want to change the color, so let's give it a different color. And let's make it a darker gray. Okay. Now, let me see that design again. Okay, so um, long tube, and then it's got, I mean, would you say, three fins on it, and then two strap on pods. So let's put the fins on first. Um, so we have to, in order to put the fins on, we have to select the body tube. And then you can come over here and you can decide what fin kind of fins you want. So if this rocket, it looked like simple trapezoid shaped fins. So that would be the regular fins. Um, you could also make them custom, but it's um, custom is typically for fins that have curvature to them. So it's not a trapezoid and it's not an ellipse. Um, so anything else would be trapezoid or custom fin, but it's gotta be flat. Um, but then you can also have ring tails and tube fins. So those are your round ones. So let's put a fin on this, this rocket. Um, again, it looks in the database and I'm gonna ignore that. Um, but then when it comes to back to this screen, it, it threw up some generic fins. So now we can edit these fins. Um, you can, I'm in 3D, I can go back to 2D. So now I'm looking at just the side profile. And um, I'll make them a little bit shorter. And then I need to sweep them a little bit aft. So here's my sweep sliders I can choose either sweep length or sweep angle they're connected so if you change one it changes the next one um, so I'm going to choose a sweep length just kind of sweep them back a little bit and maybe make them a little bit longer uh, I'm going to say that it's the location of these fins is going to be referenced from the base of the part so here's my base so right now they're at zero um, and then I want to change the root cord length. I want to make them a little bit longer. All right. 
So I like that one a little bit better. Uh, material, let's make them out of balsa wood. Thickness of 0.125, which is fine. Let's do a color. Let's do red and a 2D color purple. And we'll call it OK. So there's my fins. And let's put a motor mount in this rocket tube. So I need to highlight the body tube again. We're going to put an inside tube, which is our motor mount. And we'll put in a 24 millimeter motor. So here's a 24 millimeter tube. Click OK. And it put the tube in here, but it's really long. I don't need it that long, so I'll, I'll shorten it up. And that looks good, but it's here at the front of the tube, and I need to move it to the back. So let's slide it back here. Okay, slide it out. I always have mine hanging out the bottom just a little bit so that it's easier to get the motor in and out. And let's also change this to the base of the owning part. And by doing that, if I shorten up this tube or make it longer, these parts will, will follow so that I don't have to come back and move the uh, location of that tube. Uh, let's give it a color. Let's also make this one red. And the 2D color. I'll make it pink. Um, let's see, there's one other thing I wanted to change. I wanted to come over here and say this is a motor mount tube. This is what tells Roxim which of the tubes we're going to put motors in. So I'm going to check that box and it says, as soon as I do it, it says a 24 millimeter motor will fit into here. That's perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. So we'll click OK. So now we have our motor tube. Now we need to add some centering rings. So again, highlight the body tube and come over here to centering ring, click on that. And I know that this is going to be a 24 to 6, 50, 60, 24 to 41, or 18 to 41.6. Here's a 24 to 41.6. So that's a 24 millimeter motor mount tube into a BT60. So I'll click OK. You can see it drew the ring right here. And I'm going to change the location. And I'm just going to slide it back to right over the front of the motor tube, which is right there. So that looks good. We're going to change the name. We're going to call it the front centering ring. Um, color, doesn't really matter what color it is. I'm going to make it uh, like a dark. Can't remember what other what gray that I used before. I want to match that same color gray. Yeah, maybe I'll make it a little bit lighter. Okay. And the 2D color I'll leave alone. And I'll click OK. And you can see now I've got my front centering ring here. Now we need another ring at the back. Um, the fastest way to do that is to just copy and paste. So I'm going to copy this so I can highlight it, then go to edit, do a copy. And then I need to paste it somewhere. I'm going to paste it back into this body tube. So highlight the tube and then go up to edit and say paste. And you can see it pasted it, but it pasted it exactly at the same location. But I'll just edit the, uh, the location just by opening it up and then just sliding it further rearward. And I should have specified it at the base of the owning part. This front one I didn't. So if I ever shortened up this tube, this ring will follow the, the length of the tube, but this one is not. It's always going to be a fixed distance from that front of the tube. Okay, so that's okay. Okay, so now we're going to save our design just in case. I'm going to put it on my desktop, and we'll call this, I don't know what to call this, um, Delta 2 hybrid. OK, now we need to put on our strap on boosters. So um, I need to put a parachute in here as well and shock cord. And you could put an engine block and uh, engine hook. Uh, 
Uh, for expediency, I'll just go ahead and just put in a parachute for right now. So highlight the tube that the parachute's gonna go into, and then come up here to parachute. And I'm gonna put in an 18 inch nylon parachute. It puts it right here. I'm gonna change the location, slide it back into the tube a little bit. Um, and then let's change the color. Let's make it a yellow parachute and an orange in 2D. So there's our parachute. Click OK. At this point, we could actually fly this rocket. Um, and I think I, I will. So I'll just test it. So I'm going to choose an engine. Eskis D12-7. Click OK. Go to the flight events. It's going to deploy to maximum injection delay, which is good. Starting state, still 60 degree launch. 60, 60 inches long straight up flight. Um, and I'm going to put my wind speed back to 6 miles an hour. And then I'm going to do a flight profile. Just see quickly what it looks like. And it says it crashed. Why did this one crash? <laughs> Rocket went up. Went that over the top, man. It uh, well, it crashed because it didn't have a long enough time to hit the ground. It's kind of like this rocket is really heavy. Whoo, yeah, it's 416 grams. So we got something in our rocket is weighing way too much. I suspect it's the transition. So let's go to the design components. Let's look at the transition and see what the mass is. So I'm going to open that up. It says it calculates at 301 grams. And the reason is because we made it solid. Let's make it hollow and give it a thinner wall thickness. And now it calculates the mass at 37 grams. That sounds much more reasonable. Um, our total mass of the rocket is 152, yeah, which is probably OK. This is why the 2D flight profile is so useful because just by looking at it, I said, man, oh man, that's not going very high. I need to figure out why. So let's go to flight profile again. Now, so I took out the mass of that and let's see what it does this time. So now it's going straighter. It's going a lot higher. We're going to get over eh, pretty close to a thousand feet, not quite. And now it's coming down and it's going to land well over 400 feet away. Okay. All right, so now let's add some strap-on booster pods to that. Okay, so on his picture, he had two pods. Um, they kind of look like, um, he, they, they look like the strap-on booster pod set that we sell at Apogee. Um, let me open up a new tab here. And go to Apogee Rockets. And let's go to strap on. Okay, strap on booster pods. And if you look at these, it looks very similar to what uh, we saw in his photograph. So that's what we're going to install. So um, again, we're to add parts, we go to the rocket design components tab. Click on that, and we're going to add a pod. So here's the first um, part that's not, this is a little bit more advanced. Um, so we're going to add a pod. So there's a button over here called the pods. We'll click on that. And you can see the location of this pod right now is right here. So that location is where the tip of the nose cone is on the pod. So I'm going to just slide it back. Oh, uh, I don't know. It's further back. We'll probably adjust it later. Um, and we'll call it a strap on booster pod. And we have it checked by default is as this pod can be ejected during simulations, which means that during flight they can fall off. That's all that that means. So we're going to click OK there. And now we're going to start adding parts 
to this pod. So highlight the, the pod, and then we're going to choose one of these, and I'm going to choose my nose cone. And I know that that's an Apogee nose cone. So it's a PNC 24A. And I know this just because we sell them. And that's the shape of it. Um, and it says it's poly polystyrene, it's hollow, um, it has a mass of 4.5 grams. We need to give it a color. Uh, I'm going to give it color red. 2D color, I don't know. Just make it that color. So there's my nose cone. That's a bad choice of color because it's hard to see. All right, so at least I can kind of see it better than the yellow. I click OK. So now we got a nose cone. Let's add some tubes to the nose cone. So we're going to add a body tube. And that's a 24 millimeter. And I got two 24s. I got this one right here, and I got another one that is six inches clear. And I don't want a clear one, I want a paper one. Um, this says it's 18 inches, so that's way too long, so we'll shorten that up. You can see I'm just moving the slider bar until it gets down to about the bottom of the rocket. So that's good. We'll click OK. And the color on this is that gray. I'll leave that alone. Okay, and let's add an inside tube to that for the motor mount. So we want an 18 millimeter. And so it added a tube, but that's way too long, so we're going to shorten it up. 2.75 inches, we're going to say from the base of the owning part. And we're going to move that to minus 0.5 because I like to hang them out the back a little bit. The color, um, let's make it black. I'm just randomly choosing colors here just to make it pretty. Okay, so there's the engine tube. And again, like before, we would need centering rings in this tube. So click on the centering ring button. And that's from a 24, or no, an 18 to 24. So I'm looking 18 to 24. So here's 13, here's 18, 24. Click on that, click OK. Put the nose cone right there. We're going to move it back just by sliding it back until it's at the front of the motor tube. OK, we'll call this the front pod centering ring. Click OK. We need to duplicate that like we did before, but instead of going to, to the edit menu, I'm just going to right click on it with my mouse and it brings up this menu. And I'm going to say copy and then I'm going to highlight this and, and do another right click and it will bring up the menu and I can say paste it. So it pasted another ring right on top of it. So we'll just edit this one. We're going to call it the aft pod centering ring and we'll change the location. Oh, I want to go further back. Okay, so now we got that centering ring right there in the back. Click OK. Uh, we want to put a streamer in this pod. So select the pod tube, do a, not a sub assembly, streamer. Cancel that. So there's the body tube streamer. Let's go a four inch wide mylar, uh, 56 inches long. So that's really long. Oh, sorry. Oof. I'm yawning here. It's getting warm in the building. <laughs> uh, color, let's make it um, orange. And 2D color, we'll make it that color. Click OK. So there's this. The streamer is, is slide it back just a little bit. It's probably too wide. Let's call it uh, 45. And location doesn't quite fit between those two, but that will be okay. Click OK. 
All right, so now we've got a pod attached. If we look at it from the base of the rocket, you see that it, it's um, going right here into the fin. See all this grid right here? That can be turned off. We talked about that, I think, a week ago, maybe two weeks ago. Again, that's under the rocks and preferences. And that is show angle grid and stability graph overlay. So click OK there. And now that goes away. So now you can see that our tube is interfering with one of the fins. So we need to move that pod. So there's the pod. Let's look at it from the base view. Oops, I said 3D. I wanted base view. And we'll go to the radial position and we'll just move it off of the fin just a hair. Just slide it around until it's off of the fin. And then we'll put another one exactly opposite. So that way we can get two pods with three fins. And to do that, so now we just need to duplicate that pod. We're going to duplicate everything. So I'm going to go to the pod, which is right here. And I'm going to, again, I'm going to do a copy. And then I'm going to go to the body tube and paste. So right click and paste. And now we have two pods, but they're on top of each other. So I need to move one of them. So I'll move the bottom one by editing it. Go to radial position and that radial angle, uh, we want to be exactly 180 degrees. So, so that's going to be 306. No, 180. 1. No, 206. Right, so now we're on the opposite side. It looks like it's interfering, but this outer ring right here is actually the nose cone. And so we're attached to this smaller tube on the inside. So that's still okay. Um, if we had a launch lug, we would have to put the launch lug on a standoff, which can be done. But we'll ignore that for now because we're running out of time here. Click OK. So now we have our two pods. Um, if we look at it in 3D, so you can kind of see now we're looking pretty close to what he had shown us in his image. So different colors, of course. OK, so now let's um, go ahead and launch this pod. Um, let's put motors in it first. Now yeah, we better save it. Save. Now we'll put motors in it. Okay, so why is it not showing my pods? Oh, I think I forgot to specify those pods as being engine tubes. So this tube here was one of them. And sure enough, I didn't say that that was an engine pod. So that was one side. So now we got to do the same thing on the other one. This is a motor mount. Click OK. OK, save it again. Now let's go to prepare for launch. Now we're seeing the two tubes. Let's choose an engine. Let's go with uh, Estes. Oh, these are, why is it saying 24? Oh, that's that one. I don't, want, I don't want to change that one at all. Cancel. I want this one. And let's say it's a B60, which is good. I want to eject these things as soon as they burn them out. Just get them off the rocket as fast as possible. So I got one loaded. And then to do the other one, I can just um, hit load all. Because what it load all does is it finds the engine diameter 
and it will take the one that you have highlighted and it will load that one in all the tubes that are the same diameter. And so that's that one there. Um, flight events. Okay, so both of these have streamers and they're going to deploy the streamers right at maximum ejection delay. Um, and everything else is the same. So let's do the flight profile. So now in, in Roxim, we won't see the flight profile, the pods falling off. If you want to see that, we need to go into the Launch Visualizer or Roxium Pro. Or we could, Chris Swainston wanted to learn about how to do strap on boosters or uh, how to do sprites. Uh, I'm not sure we're going to get the sprites today because we're running out of time. Okay, so here's the rocket. See, this rocket does not show the pods on the outside, but we can launch it and the rocket takes off and it does fine. So how do you tell if the pods fell off? You got to look at the mass of the rocket because when those pods fall off, it's going to lose mass right now. <laughs> um, so to see that, we need to go to the graphs and we're going to chart um, we want to see the mass and we want to see the thrust curve because as soon as those motors burn out we should see um, the rocket's mass drop really really fast so let's plot the graph and you can see well you can't hardly see it over to the side so I'm going to adjust the time of this graph to about five seconds so I'm just going to go back and we're going to end the graph at the flight time of five seconds. And then replot. Okay, so now we can see it. So now we can see the thrust curve is this black line. And then as soon as these motors burn out, the two small the two small ones, that's where we see the mass the, the mass, which is the, the, the magenta color. It just drops. This is the pods falling off. And then um, it continues to lose mass because the, the main motor burns a lot longer. So it's still losing mass until it burn out and then the mass stays constant all the way until the rocket hits the ground. So that's the rocket. You can see the motors are in the back. Um, let's save it again. And now I'm going to go into the Launch Visualizer and we'll see what it looks like in 3D. Um, actually, I want to open up a new Chrome window. I usually use Chrome for, because, well, it's just preference. And then you just go to rocksim.com and it will load the Launch Visualizer. Is it being slow? I must have like terrible internet in this room. It's still loading. I'm waiting for my buttons to show up. Okay, log in. If you don't have an account, just go down here and create a new account. And I'm signing in. Okay, so I'm going to take that file that we just did and I'm going to upload it to the launch visualizer. So I'm going to click on the upload new rocket design. It's still loading. It's taking a little bit longer because my internet's slow. Um, browse for the design and I threw it on the desktop. So desktop um, what did we call this thing Delta 2 hybrid open it and we're gonna upload it and it's uploading it into the cloud right now and it was successful and then we'll see it here in just a second 
Okay, just like it, we designed it. And let's pick a launch site. So I'm going to choose a launch site. I'm going really fast now because we're just running out of time. Wait for the launch sites to load. Philadelphia Area Rocketry Association. I bet you that's close to Philadelphia. It's going to load a map of the launch field here. Just waiting for that to show up. Okay, so that's not a not a bad location. Let's see. Let's get it in two D. Okay, so now north is straight up. Let me zoom out a little bit. I don't want to be launching in that lake. Maybe they launch from I don't know which field they launch from. Uh, maybe this field over here. They, maybe they come in on this road, come in past the barn, and let's say they're launching right there where that red dot is. And I'll confirm the launch site. I'm just trying to get a lay of the land here. All right, so to the west, I got a wide open field. Um, so I'm going to angle my rocket to the west. And so I'm going to aim it to the west, just like clicking and dragging there. And a couple of degrees from vertical. And I can orient it on the pad. Here I can rotate it around the pad, make sure that they're, they're both kind of going towards the west. Okay, it's kind of like right there. All right, so let's um, change the wind. Oops, end the simulation when it hits the ground. Yep, steady wind. And let's make it six miles an hour. So it's got a little bit of breeze. And let's put some rocket motors in it. Um, so here's got the two 18 millimeters and the 124. So let's put that, um, I think it was a D12. So I'm just scrolling down to the Estes section. Here it is, Estes D12. And let's make it a seven second delay. Engine overhang, let's make it 0.5 inches. So it hangs out the back a half of an inch. Click OK. And let's do the 18 millimeter motors. And let's say we used a B6. And they were zeros. Point 0.5, oops. Not five inches, we want 0.5. Click OK. So we got one loaded, and then we'll load them all just like we did before. All right, and then here, let's go to the events. Um, we have a streamer in the two pods, a parachute in the main core. And let's do maximum ejection delay for all of them. So that's OK. Let's launch it. It's going to tell me it's going to use 27 credits. And we're launching. Still loading the maps. Loading the maps. OK. 
connect now. We're starting to see the field behind the rocket. Okay, so it looked like there was some grass, then some plowed field, and then some more grass, just like we saw before. Um, okay, so that looks fine. Let's zoom in a little bit. So down here we got a, um, a large view of the rocket. In this view we'll see the trajectory. And I'll change it to a trajectory view. And so the rocket was like right there where my pointer is. Let's zoom in just a little bit. But watch this rocket because you're going to see the pods. Here you should see the pods falling off. So in case we launch, the rocket takes off, lots of smoke. And there's the pods are gone. And they're falling down somewhere here on the ground. And I think they fell right there. But the, ro the main rocket is way up in the sky. It went up way out of the reach here. There it is. So we're getting to the end of the smoke right now. And now the parachute came out and the rocket is drifting down. We need to see a, a trajectory. So I'm going to go here to preferences. Um, I want to see the weather cocking cone. I want to see the trajectory path. And I want to see the extruded ground flight path. Okay, click OK. All right, so that's interesting. <laughs> We got what is this going on right here? I'm going to pause it and zoom in, see if we can figure out what's going on. If you lose your rocket, click on the Find My Rocket in the Sky button. There's the rocket. And you can see it's coming down on parachute. Now the strap-on boosters, they fell off and they're probably on the ground. So I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. Where did we launch from? Okay, our launch point was way over here. Okay, so those pods, they did fall off and they fell like almost right next to the launch pad. So here's the launch pad and that's where the first pods, well they're bo probably both fell right there. But I do not know what this other green line is from. All of a sudden it went crazy and it's like going towards the center of the earth into the ground. Yeah, it's like way underground. I can't even see where it, where it ends. It might be the center of the earth. <laughs> Interesting. So, but that is how you input a rocket from scratch um, and now um, you can do you can run your simulations to find the rocket motors that you need uh, I'm just checking over there this one is working but at a lower level hmm I don't know how to adjust that it's probably in my system preferences somewhere. So I'm sorry for the microphone not working properly again. Um, but I thank you for coming. <laughs> so we designed the rocket, we added strap-on boosters, and we all did it from scratch. Um, and then we started running simulations and you can see what it's like. So there was a lot of questions that we answered in running the simulation, but hopefully, um, We'll get to Chris's question next time. So Chris, remind me of that next week that we want to talk about sprites. Maybe we can kind of figure out what's going on with your sprites. Um, yeah. 
So we went really long today. Normally we try to keep this at an hour. Uh, but thank you for showing up. Well, we'll be back next week, same time, which is 4 p.m. on the east coast of the U.S., which is 2 p.m. here in the mountain time zone. And I don't know what the other time, now that we're getting into switching out of daylight savings time, I personally like daylight savings time. I hate winter you know, standard time because it gets too dark early. And uh, I, I'd rather have it be lighter at the end of the day. So if we had to get rid of one, I would get rid of the uh, the non-daylight savings time and just keep daylight savings time year-round. <laughs> That's my vote, but I'm sure it's not going to matter a hill of beans to anybody that makes a decision. So thanks for coming. We'll see you next time. So in five, four, three, two, one, go out and launch something. <laughs>